Okay, you guys. I'm here. I... I'm sitting in a chair right now, but I have my room set up so that I can, like, function with yoga. So basically, the way that we're going to do this is I'm going to be on my mat, obviously, over here in this area. I'm sorry you have a... Oh, thank you. I also enjoy my starting screen. That's why I use it. <laughs> um, so the way that it's going to work is I'm going to shove my chair out of the way and I'll be over here. Um, I think I've got the camera at an angle that you'll be able to see me pretty well standing and relatively well seated or supine, but we'll find out. If you guys end up noticing that there will be any issues, just let me know. I'm going to have my phone. So I've got Twitch up on my phone so I can see your chats while things are happening. So if you have any questions, feel free to message me, post in chat, and I'll answer them. One thing I do want to point out, particularly with any yoga, but particularly with me, I'm six foot one and I'm all leg. So don't try and mirror what my body looks like. Try and emulate what my cues are telling you, if that makes sense. Um, obviously you can use me as like a general, this is what I should be doing, but we're not going to look the same because I am ridiculously proportioned. And that's the way, that's just the way of my life. Um, I'm now moving my mic over somewhere where you'll be able to hear me. Yeah, do exactly, Oop, okay, what I do. Oh, also, I hope you guys can still hear me. I'm not going to be playing any music because, um... Honestly, because I have to figure out how loud my voice is going to be relative to anything else. Also, because of I don't want to get DMCA'd. Um, if you like music, please feel free to use your own. And last thing is going to be I won't be demoing any kind of backbending because I've got this torn muscle. <laughs> so anything like that, I'm not going to be doing at all. But I will cue you guys to do it. All right. All right. So we're actually going to start in um, child's pose, which is like the best place to start, I think, personally, because it feels the best. Um, I usually like to take a child's pose with wide legs, but honestly, I would recommend for today, keep your knees together. Uh, butt as close to your heels as you can, and then just bring your chest to the ground. You can reach your arms out front, in front of you, nice and heavy. If that's hard on your shoulders, which it might be for some people, depending on how tight your shoulders are, you can always put your arms behind you. And this is perfectly fine. All are valid variations of child's pose. So we're just going to take some breaths here to get settled in. And yeah, that's what we're gonna that's where we're gonna start. So if you just wanna settle in here, head down and and uh, come into our breath. So deep, slow inhales and slow exhales. Maybe inhaling for a count of four. So inhale two three, four, and exhale for four, two, three, four. Two more like that. Inhale. Exhale. Really allow the breath to go down your spine and feel your back broaden with it. Inhale for four. And exhale for four. Two more deep breaths. This time, try and make your exhale last a little bit longer than your inhale. So inhale for four and exhale for six. Inhale. Exhale. Two, three, four, five, six. 
Really let your body sink down into the earth and relax. Inhale, two, three, four. And exhale, two, three, four, five, six. If you'd like, you can start to engage what's called ujjayi breathing. So this is when it basically, it means oceanic breath. So think of the noise that your breath would make if you were trying to fog up a window. So constrict the back of your throat just a little bit and your inhales and your exhales will make an audible noise. This helps to create heat within the body and it can give you something to kind of focus on in positions that might be a little bit challenging. It's a nice way to get through a practice and I think it's a fun practice to work on. So on your next breath, go ahead and shift forward into a tabletop position. You want your shoulders to be over your wrists and your hips to be aligned over your knees. And we're just gonna take a couple of breaths here and then we'll move into cat cows. So cat cows are gonna give a, be a back bend that I'm not going to demonstrate too heavily. But, um, so right, once you're here, keep your, press your shins and the tops of your toes and all of your fingers into the ground. Try and keep your weight out of your wrists. You can do that by making sure you're pressing down into the pads and the knuckles of your fingers. On an, on an inhale, drop your belly, look up and raise your tailbone. This is, this is a um, cow pose and I can't do it right because my belly, but just think about dropping your belly to the ground and your tailbone and your, the crown of your head reaches up. And then exhale, take a cat pose. Drop your tailbone, point it to the ground. The crown of your head points to the ground and arch your back. And then just do a few more of those with your own breath. So inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. And then you can feel free to take any kind of movement that might be comfortable for you. A lot of people like to take barrel rolls through the chest. Either way, these are small ones. You can take larger barrel rolls depending on your front body flexibility. I like to shift back and wiggle my hips around, kind of make hip circles, just kind of wakening up the spine. Any kind of movement that might feel good in your body. If it doesn't feel comfortable, then you don't need to do it. And make sure you're moving with your own breath. So on your inhale, you take a movement, and on your exhale, you take another movement. Just a few more breaths here. Hey, thanks coach. I appreciate that. All right. On your next inhale, I want you to tuck your toes. Um, really take a moment to feel the stretch on the bottoms of your feet. We spend a lot of time, even people who sit in a desk job all day, neglecting the bottoms of our feet. So this should feel really good. On your next inhale, press into the ground with your hands and your feet and raise your knees two inches off of the ground. Just a little bit. Your back stays straight, push into the ground. Your shoulder blades should be pulled apart around the rib cage. Take a couple breaths here. And lower down. And then one more time. Take an inhale to reset. Exhale, let it out. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, raise the knees two inches off of the ground. Just stay for one breath this time. And then press your hips up to the sky into downward facing dog. You may have to adjust your stance. You'll see that I step back. I take a wider downward facing dog than probably most people. Your heels do not have to touch the ground. What you want to think about is, oh my gosh, my shirt is like falling up my face. I normally don't practice yoga with a shirt on, guys. So, you want your hips, foot, you want your hips, hips, foot width distance. You want your feet hip width distance apart. You can feel free to take, take a little pedal. I always do, it feels good. I have really tight hamstrings and hips, so this feels really good to me. My heels will never touch the ground in downward facing dog. So your hands will be shoulder width apart. Push the ground away with them. You want a really flat spine here. Drop the head in between the biceps. And look to your thighs or the back wall behind you. 
Again, just hold here. Take a couple of breaths. Pedal out if you need to. You can bend your knees to lift the sit bones up towards the sky. Push from the earth away with your fingers. Bring weight into the, the pads of the fingers and the joints of the fingers and out of the wrists. On your next inhale, lift up on your toes, look forward and tippy toe forward so that your, your feet end up behind your hands. Here, we're gonna take a rag doll. So this is a forward fold. You can bend your legs as much as you need. Let your, let your head drape down and you can, you can stay here. You can keep your hands supported you. Shift forward, keep the weight into your toes. You could lift your, your heels, but I don't want you to. So just think that you could lift your heels and it wouldn't make a difference of where your weight is sitting. Grab your elbows. You can reach around and grab opposite elbows behind your legs. You can interlock your, your fingers behind your head and pull the spine down. But what we're going here is that we want to release the spine. So this is a stretch of the upper body. Make sure you, again, bend your legs as much as you need to. You want to drape your belly onto your thighs. And you can take some movement here as well. So go ahead and rock back and forth. Or if it feels better to just sit, you can just sit here and breathe. On your next inhale, press your hands back to the floor, mat, whatever it is, and then raise up halfway. Hands on your shins. You can put your hands on your thighs. It does not matter how high you lift up as long as your back is flat. Shift the weight forward into your toes once again. And your, your gaze should be a little bit forward. You want a long spine. Exhale, fold back to the ground. Bend your knees and roll up to a standing position. Think about articulating your spine and rolling up one vertebrae at a time. Here, we'll land in mountain pose. Inhale, your hands above your head and exhale your hands to heart center. Take a moment here to settle it. If you show up today with no intention, I would like to offer you the intention to just accept where you are in your practice, the affirmation that you are enough and you have everything that you need as you are right now. Oh, hello, I'm getting rated during yoga, you guys. Awesome, okay, anyway, we're gonna move into Sun Ace. Make sure you breathe with your uh, intention. So go ahead and inhale and reach up to the sky. Um, take a back bend here if you can, eyes up and then reach back. Again, I'm not going to because I have an injury. And then exhale and swan dive down to the mat. Amazing. All right, now you're here. I've lost my balance because I'm happy. All right, halfway lift to the hands, to the shins, or the thighs again, and then exhale, fold down. Step back into your high plank. Hold here for a moment, lower your knees, and drop, <laughs> and drop down to your belly, one piece. From here, keep your shoulders, keep your hands underneath your shoulders. You want your fingertips to light up with the tops of your shoulders, and use your core strength in your back to lift up into a small cobra. You can press all the way up if you want. I'm like, this is a bad example because I'm closing my front body, but you want to open your front body. On your exhale, lower down. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, push up to a tabletop position. And then press up into your downward facing dog. Again, you can take some movement here if you want to. I usually keep my feet a little bit closer to hip width, but it's up to you, whatever's comfortable. And then from here, look forward, bend your knees, walk, step, or float to the top of your mat. Feet together, this time your toes can touch, your heels can have a sliver of space in between them if you need it. Inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, fold. Rise 
straight spine all the way up. Take a little back bend. You can cactus the arms if it helps. Think about lifting from your chest so there's a little strength attached to your sternum pulling you straight up. Inhale to rise and exhale, hands to heart center. So inhale your arms to rise again. Ex uh, exhale to your backwards bend again. Inhale, rise and exhale, fold. So we'll do three more sun A's and then we'll move into sun B and then we'll go into the standing sequence. So inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold, step. You can jump if you want to jump back, but make sure that you're bending your knees and you land with bent knees so that you're not harming your joints. Into a high plank. If you would like to take a traditional vinyasa, you can, I will show you how. So we will, all right, shift forward two inches onto the tips of your toes. Bend the, the elbows, come halfway down. So you can bend your knees for this and lower halfway down, keeping a straight spine, or you can keep your legs up. Lift, shift forward, halfway down. You will roll over your toes, keeping the legs bent into an upward facing dog. Again, this is a back bend, I can't really demo it very well due to my injury. And then from upward facing dog, Roll over your toes and push up into a downward facing dog. So from with your upward facing dog, if you choose this variation, you're pressing into the ground with the tops of your feet and your hands and that is it. Your legs are off the ground. So we will meet in downward facing dog. Again, push the earth away. Make sure you're thinking about a, a flat spine. Take a moment to reset. Inhale, look forward, bend your legs, walk, step, or float forward to meet your toes. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, arms up, gaze up. Exhale to your backwards bend. It can be small or big. Inhale, arms to center, uncurl the spine. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Step back to your high plank. Take whatever vinyasa variation you'd like. I'm modifying my vinyasas today because I have no choice. Push up into a, a what's it called? Tabletop position. And we'll meet again in downward facing dog. This will be our last Sunday. Eyes forward, walk, step, float to the top of the mat. Halfway lift, exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands to heart center. Adjust your clothing as needed. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, backwards bend. Inhale, rise. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift, exhale, fold, step back to your high plank, shift forward two inches, lower halfway, upward facing dog or cobra pose, and then meet in downward facing dog. Inhale, eyes forward, bend the knees, walk, step, or float to the, to the front of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands to heart center. Now we'll move into the sun bees. I'm gonna take a drink because I'm hot. Always feel free. If at any time you get hot or tired, you can move into child's pose, you can move into savasana, whatever's comfortable, take breaks, drink water. Remain hydrated, stay healthy. Yoga is supposed to feel good. It shouldn't be uncomfortable or unpleasant. When you're ready, inhale, arms up, and exhale, chair pose. We're not gonna stay here for long. So think about, you want to shift your weight back. You could wiggle your toes if you want to. 
look down, you should be able to see all 10 toes in front of your knees. Think about shifting your butt back and think about turning the inside seams of your pants out. So the back of your spine should be very wide. Try and maintain the natural curve of your spine. So your upper body should be doing a little bit of a cobra. If you want, you can keep your arms up. If that's too much on the shoulders, hands at heart center. I'm sorry I kept you here much longer than I planned to. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Step back into high plank. Take your version of a vinyasa. And meet me in downward facing dog. When you're ready, lift your right leg. Keep your pinky, pinky toe edge of the foot dialed down. It doesn't have to be lifted that high. My, mine isn't. Try and keep your left foot down. And then when you're ready, bring the knee into the chest, shift forward, and then step the foot through the hands. Lower down the back knee, untuck the toes, and rise. Anjanayasana. If you'd like, you can take a small back bend here. Not, but you can. Think about tractioning the front toes back and the back foot forward to come out of your hips and sit tall, sink down into the front leg. Exhale, frame the toes, frame the right toes with both hands, pop the back knee up, step the right foot back to meet the left, vinyasa and meet me in downward facing dog. And you can always skip a vinyasa. You can go straight to downward facing dog or you can rest in child's pose. It is totally up to you. Inhale, left leg up, I'm close to the wall. Dial the pinky toe edge of the, the foot down, two hips in one line. On an exhale, bring the knee into the chest, roll forward, and step the foot in between the two hands. Release the right knee, untuck the toes, and bring the gaze up into Anjanayasana. Again, Prith, think about tractioning your back, your front foot back and your back leg forward to come out of your hips. Sink into the lunge, but keep your upper body lifted. You can take a back bend here if you want. You can reach for opposite elbows and move the arm bones back and follow them with your gaze. You can keep arms straight by the side. You can clasp the hands, whatever you really like. Exhale. Frame the foot, pop the right leg up, step the foot back to meet the right, take a vinyasa or skip it and meet me in downward facing dog. Take a few breaths here to reset. On your next inhale, look forward, bend the knees, walk, step, or float to the front of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back, exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep the hands on the floor and rise into chair pose. We're only here for a couple minutes, or a couple breaths. Inhale, stay, and exhale, rise. Hands to heart center. Take a moment here to reset. Inhale, hands sweep up overhead. Exhale, little back bend or big back bend, whichever you want. Inhale, uncurl the spine, reach up. Exhale, fold over, bend the knees as much as you need to. I forgot chair pose, so we're gonna go back to it. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold, sweep the hands up by the ears or hands to heart center. If this is too much, do not push yourself. 
You can put your hands in front of you. You can put your hands on heart center. You can put your hands on your hips to know where you are in space if that helps you. Stay here for one more breath. And exhale, fold. Inhale, rise halfway up. Flat back. Exhale, fold. Step or jump back into your high plank. Take your vinyasa or dunk. And meet in downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale, knee to nose. Step through, drop the left knee, untuck the toes, and lift up into Andhra Nayasana. Exhale, hands for in the foot, pop the left knee up, step right foot back to meet left. Vinyasa or don't, meet in downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, tuck the, the knee to nose. Shift forward, step the foot through, lower the right knee, untuck the toes, and lift into Andhra Nayasana on the, on the left. Exhale, hands from the foot, pop the right knee up, step back, left foot meets, meets right foot and lower down into your vinyasa or straight to downward facing dog. Again, just take a couple breaths here to reset. Inhale through your nose and exhale through the mouth. Let out some heat. One more big breath through the nose. And exhale through the mouth, sigh it out. <sighs> Ellie's having a meltdown because her dad's not home. On your next inhale, lift, the, lift up high on your toes, bend your knees, look forward, walk, step, or float. Yes, it's hard. That's why you can always take breaks. Feel free to take breaks anytime you need them. This is our last Sunday, and then we're going to move into some probably some more challenging postures, but they might feel good. <laughs> you fell. We all fall. Everybody falls. <laughs> it's fine. All right. Sweep the arms up into chair pose. Just one breath here, and then exhale. Rise. I'm sweating. So, like, I do this every single day. And I should have told you guys to bring water and like a sweat towel, but I was like, maybe it won't be hard. And then I started doing it and I lied to myself. It's fine. All right. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale your hands to the right center and take a little rest here. If you want, you can close your eyes. Do I still have 16 viewers? You've run out of space. You can always modify. So, like, I'm long, so it's, it gets kind of hard. But, there you go. Always modify your space. You can tilt. A lot of times, I when I sweep my arms up, I end up, like, bending my, my arm. But that's the way that we... <laughs> this is the way that I'm doing it. And we have an Ellie. All right. When you're ready, go ahead and lift. Raise your arms back up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Frame your feet. Step back straight into a downward facing dog. Piggy is helping. That's good. Tell her thanks. Long hair does not help. That's like when I cut my hair off, it was amazing for yoga. All right, you guys. Now we're going to move into a standing sequence. Take breaks anytime you need to. You can come down and do cat cows if you feel like it. You can come into child's pose. You can literally just go into savasana if at any point anything is too much. When you're ready, lift right leg up. Pinky toe edge dials down. Try and keep your hips in one line. Tuck knee. 
into chest, roll forward and touch your right knee to your opposite elbow. You probably won't touch, I don't touch. Hold, breathe, and exhale. Push the leg back up, three-legged dog. I'm sorry, that was awful and you didn't see it coming. Exhale, tuck the knee into your chest again. This time bring it through and set the foot down. This time we're gonna come up and do a high crescent lunge. Back foot stays lifted. You want your hips square to the front. If this is too much, keep the back leg down. This is fine, this is plenty. Otherwise, sweep the arms up into a high crescent lunge. Again, think about tractioning the front foot back and the back foot forward, come out of your hips. Arms can be up, arms can be at your hips. I like my arms on my hips, so I know where they are in space. On an exhale, drop the back foot, point it towards about a 45 degree angle, kind of towards the front of the mat. Or if that's not comfortable, find a way that works for you. Ideally, so this pose is traditionally taught where your back, your front heel bisects the back of the foot. I don't like that. I feel like it's too much. I feel like the rotation of my hips doesn't work that way. So feel free to take a step wider. The point of this pose is to open the hips. So you're externally rotated on your front leg and you're internally rotated on the, on the back. Open your, leg, open your hips towards the wall it won't be completely straight. Do the best you can. Sink into the front leg. Toes should be pointing over your toes. Knee should be tracking over it in the same direction as your toes. And that's what's important. All right, what do I have? All right. Push the arms out to, up to the front and back of the wall. They should pretty much be over your ankles. On an inhale, drop the back arm, let it trickle down the leg, or you can wrap it around if you prefer. And reach to an exalted warrior. This is a side bend, so you really wanna be reaching out of the side. You shouldn't really feel it too much in your front body. For example, I have an injury in my front body that opening my front body causes me pain. This doesn't hurt me. Inhale. Come through center, land the right arm on the top of the thigh. Try not to rest it too much there. If you sink into it, it's okay, but the point is to keep yourself lifted. And lift the right arm up to the sky. If you're feeling really strong, you can just, you can let the elbow come to the inside of the knee. Bend back. Your hips should be in the same line of movement as they were in Warrior Two. On an inhale, let your top arm pull you up and straighten your right leg. We're gonna drop again the back, the left arm down the back leg and come into a reverse trikonasana. Again, this is a side bend. Try and keep your hips underneath of your body, kind of stacked. On an exhale, Bring your arms wide again over your ankles, tilt forward a bit, and then when you've tilted as much as you can, tick tock your arms into Trikonasana pose. So, okay, I'm facing a bad way for you guys to see me. This is the way. Oh my gosh, thank you for the biddies. Again, so, your, your hips, your feet can be as wide or as narrow as you like them. Just make sure that your knee is pointing in the same direction as your toes. Shift forward and tick tock down. Hopefully this lets you be able to see me a little bit better. Try and, try and bring your right hip underneath of your body. You're kind of flattening your hips to the side of the room. That's physically impossible, but that's the direction you should be pushing towards. If this is too much, you can put your, your right hand on your knee or even on your shin. Not on your knee. Don't put it on your knee. Put it on your shin or your thigh. 
Avoid putting any pressure on the joint if you can. Um, try and keep a little bit of buoyancy in the front leg to make it a little bit less painful. All right, and then when you're ready, we will lift back up out of this and step the feet a little bit closer together. They say about three feet. Honestly, I'd probably go about three feet and I'm super long, so. We're gonna come into a pyramid. Um, I use blocks for this. You guys probably don't have yoga blocks sitting at home. You can use water bottles. You don't need to use a prop. You can prop yourself up on your knee. But don't move into the pose until I show you what it is so you can decide what your best option is going to be. So you want your feet to be about three, three and a half. Mine might be four. Mine are probably three and a half. You want to square your hips back towards the front of the room. If you want, you can bend your front knee. You want to come forward with a flat spine over your knee and reach toward the ground. Keep your spine flat, that's the goal, and keep your right hip pulling back. So you, again, you want two hips in one line. I already fed her. Okay. Sorry, it felt like Ellie was about to get second lunch. Um, if you can reach the floor, you can. I can't, it's too much. I can, but my hips come out of alignment and the alignment is what's most important. You can use blocks if you have them. You can use water bottles if you have them. You can put the hands on the knee and use this to help you up like it's a half, way, like it's a half lift. So once you're here, go ahead and let the spine round. Keep the, keep the hip tucked and try and keep your hips in one line. Oh my gosh. I didn't even see. Hi, hey, hey, Aftail, thank you for the follow. <laughs> Try and let your nose touch your shin. If your nose is nowhere near your shin, let your nose work towards whatever part of your leg you're close to. Inhale, link. Come up, lift all the way up very carefully. Step your left foot to meet your right. Forward fold and step back. You can, honestly, let's take a child's pose here. Let's take a couple minutes of forced rest. So if you want, you can keep your feet, your knees narrow again. You can spread your legs wide and let your chest fall towards the ground. Your arms can be in front of you or behind you. Just take a minute to rest. Inhale, link. I'm gonna take some water, because I'm thirsty. We're gonna move through that sequence just probably once on the other side. I'm sweating too, like, it's pretty toasty. But we have to move through it once, one, at least one more time or we won't be even. And then we're gonna move into the seated slash supine sequence and you'll be so happy, I promise. There's an Ellie. Oh, hello Ellie. Hey. I'm still in your car and going to get my hair cut. Oh, okay. I love you. Bye. Yeah. All right. That was distracting. If I decide to do this more often, you'll try and join me more often. We'll see if people like it. If people end up liking it, I will start doing it more frequently. Um, I know that this is kind of chaotic. I don't know if you guys can even hear me talking. I assume you can because people seem to be doing stuff. Excellent. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. Some people stayed from the raid, which confuses me, but I'm not mad. Like, I'm happy you guys are staying and practicing with me. This is super fun. Link is sitting on, I've got a notebook because I wrote this sequence earlier today. And Link is just sitting on it, so I can't figure out what I'm doing. All right, you guys. Whenever you're ready, come out of your child's pose. Go ahead and just um, take a tabletop. If you want, you can take a couple more cat cows. Just whatever feels good. We're gonna meet again in a downward facing dog. I'm glad that you're here, Ricky. If you want, you can take some movement. I always take movement in my downward facing dog. Don't feel like that means that you have to. I just like it because of how tight my, my hamstrings tend to be. 
All right, uh, what did we just do, the right side? So we're gonna do the left side. When you're ready, left foot sweeps up. Make sure you dial the pinky toe edge of the foot down. Bring the knee into the chest, shift forward, and reach, try and tap your knee to your elbow. If you can't, it's okay, squeeze the foot in, do the best that you can. Exhale, shoot the foot back up to a three-legged dog. Inhale, and exhale, bring the foot forward. This time, step it through. Again, we're gonna move into that lunge variation. You can keep the leg down if you need to. But otherwise, pop that back, leave that back leg up. Sorry, it wasn't down, it was down because I was showing you the moderation. And then lift the arms up. If you need help getting up from here, but you can hold the posture, you can use the thigh to help lift yourself up. Exhale, spin the back foot out. Adjust your stance if you need to. I like a wider stance. You guys might not. And then let the arms go to the front and backs of your room. Over the ankles, or like hypothetically over the ankles. Ellie's squeaking a toy, I'm sorry. From here, drop the back arm down and reach back into Exalted Warrior. Exhale, go straight through center into extended side angle. You can rest the arm here. You can put the elbow to the inside of the knee. Straight up and down for this variation. Sometimes you'll see extended side angle like this. And this is, this is a perfectly fine variation as well. So whichever you want to take today, I sh I'm teaching this one. A straight line through the arms. Lean back and open the hips to the side of the room. When you're ready, inhale. Allow this to straighten your leg. Drop. Oh, your dogs came running when they heard the squeak. Drop your back arm down the back of your leg and reach for a nice side bend in reverse trikonasana. That straightening really always feels good after a nice long warrior two hold. <laughs> if you want, you can step a little bit closer. I am just because I like to be a little, I like a little narrower stance for whatever reason. Again, your, your hips alignment should not really change much from warrior two to side angle to triangle. So you're still opening towards the side of the room. Ellie, you okay, dude? She's having a meltdown. She's actually just playing in the corner. It's really cute. So once you're here, shift forward. Do not move your hips. Just shift from the top half of your body. And once you can't reach any farther forward, tick tock the arms to 12 and six. Try not to land on your knee, but if you do, just let, just make sure you have a little buoyancy. So bend that, feel free to bend the knee a little bit. Keep a micro bend, you don't wanna hurt your knee joint. You can always use the shin as some support if you need to. Lean the top of the body back, like you could have the support of a wall behind you. And then when you're ready, come up. We're going to shift the hips toward the front of the room. Take a little bit of a step forward, about a three, three and a half, maybe four foot advance, depending on how tall you are. And then when you're ready, put, bring your hands to the hips and bend forward with a flat back. Once you've reached your maximum point here, you can use your shin to prop yourself up. You can bend, you can arch your back and reach your nose toward the ground, but make sure that your front, your left hip is pulling back and your hips are square to the front of the room. This is a big hamstring stretch and it should also feel pretty good on your lower back. Make sure you're keeping your abs tucked up and in. And we'll take a few breaths here. Okay, 
Whenever you're ready, you can put your hands to hips and gently raise back up. Step your right foot to meet your left. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Step back. This is going to be your last opportunity for a vinyasa if you would like it. If not, feel free to just go ahead and meet me in downward facing dog. And then shift forward, come down into one more child's pose. We're just gonna be here for like two or three breaths, just to regroup before we move into the, the seated sequence. Whenever you're ready, go ahead and shift up into a tabletop position. Cross your ankles if you can. If not, it doesn't matter. If it feels funky, don't do it this way. You can roll over and put your feet out in front of you. I'm shifting forward so that you guys can still see what I'm doing. Hopefully it's working. And we're just gonna take a little bit of core work now. Just because it's intense doesn't mean that you can't do it. It's beginner friendly because you have the ability to do it and you can modify it the way that you need and you can take breaks and take water drinks. Do anything that you need to to keep your body safe and comfortable. From here, your sits bones are down, your feet are in front of you. You can put your hands kind of behind you as a little bit of like a support, that's the word that I'm looking for. Shift back a little bit, make sure the spine is nice and straight, and lift the legs up into boat pose. We're just gonna hold here. If you need the support, feel free to keep the support. You, if you're comfortable here, make sure you can keep your spine straight. You can extend the arms. Shoulders are down, back is flat. And just hold and breathe. Inhale, and on your exhale, lower down into a low boat. So, I'm not really gonna hold that one for horribly long. Yeah, it's super hard. If you can't do it, don't feel bad. I really almost can't do it. If you need to stay up lifted a bit more, um, you can always go back just as far as you can. You can use your arms on your th the backs of your thighs as a support, but just hold if you can, and then inhale, come back up to high boat. We're gonna do it two more times. If, if it's too much to go into low boat, just hold a high boat or take a rest. See, there you go, just for you, Pont. Hold, high boat, one more X, inhale, and exhale, low boat. On your inhale, come back up to high boat. And exhale, final low boat. And then lower down. I'll bring my phone so I can see if people are in distress. Yeah, that's fair. You have to build the strength. It doesn't just like inherently come. So if it's completely new to you, you'll have to work on it a little bit before it's comfortable. Yeah, so see that's... <laughs> That's the thing about it, because everything about it is a core, everything about it uses your core somehow. So then once you get to the core work at the end, you're like, wow, if I just started with this, it would have been super easy. <laughs> and then we just have one more little piece of core work. I promise it won't be too bad. It's much easier than boat pose. Can you see me more back here? Yes, okay. Lie on your back. This is a really normal one. Everybody probably knows it. Knees above hips. You can point or flex your toes, but pick one. Don't just let your feet dangle. Interlace your fingers behind your neck. Well, behind the base of your skull, really. And on your exhale, lower your left, your left foot and bring your elbow to your knee. Don't bring your knee to your elbow. Inhale, pull back. And then repeat, 
lower your right knee, elbow to left knee, and then back. And then we'll just take a few of these at your own pace. Make sure the important part of this is the integrity of the movement. So you're not pulling your knee back to your elbow. You're lifting your elbow as close as you can to your knee. And we'll do this for about five breaths. One more each side. Meet your arms, your knees above your hips, and then lower your feet down. Lift yourself back up. Okay, have fun with your puppos. Now we're gonna move into like, honestly, everything else should feel really good. It should. Hey, Nicholas, how are you? So what we're gonna do is extend your right leg out in front of you. Flex your toes. You can't see mine, but they're flexed. Actually, I guess I could, well, I'm gonna stay up here so you can hear me for sure. Um, bring your, heck, bring your foot to the inside of your leg. Um, it can be as close or as far from your hip socket as you want it to be. I'm not too bad, just towards the end of this yoga sequence. Um, I like to take this with a half lotus. It feels really good for me. If this hurts your knee or if it hurts your hip, don't do it. Honestly, probably don't do it if you're brand new to yoga. I'm just gonna do it because I enjoy it. Just keep it on the inside. There's a yoga emote? I need that. All right, from here, inhale, lift your arms up, and exhale, fold. You can round the spine as much as you want. Just try and keep your shoulders square to the front of the room. It's not about how deep you can fold. You can bend the leg if that even feels good. Keep the belly tucked up and in. When you're ready, slide the hands back, uncurl the spine. Lift the, right, the left leg over the right knee. Inhale and bring your arm, your elbow, hook to the back of the knee. If you can't quite reach, just like grab your, your uh, thigh and twist. Make sure you're seated upright. So if you need to, you can move the fleshy parts of your butt back to really connect your sits bones to the ground. And twisting here, make sure to keep your belly sucked up and in. Twist your, think about twisting your belly in the opposite direction of your body, of your torso. Your gaze can shift over your shoulder if that's comfortable in your neck. If not, just as far as it can go. Inhale, arms up. And then you're going to bend the right the right knee and bring the left knee over top of the right. This might come easily or it might be impossible. If this is uncomfortable, you can take it supine. So you can lie on your back and just twist the knees this way and grab the feet. This is a very, this is a really big hip opener. If it's not comfortable, take a modification. If this isn't comfortable, but this is comfortable, it's fine if your knees don't stack right up. And we'll just hold this hip stretch. If you'd like, you can take a tilt. Go as far as you can with your breath still being comfortable. So if you find that your breath is catching, you've gone too far and you should back off a little bit. Listen to your body. 
Hi, Pont. We're just stretching. Stretchies are good. When you're ready, go ahead and straighten your spine. Untwist the legs. If you're laying down, bring yourself back up. We're going to go back through this sequence on the opposite side. So extend your left leg. Again, you can put your foot as close to the hip as you want or as far. You, you sh should also stretch before, but I, it's good to stretch before and after things. Um, again, I'm going to take the half lotus. If this hurts your knee, don't do it. If it hurts anything, don't do it. If anything hurts, back off a little bit. If you want to, if it hurts and you don't know how to modify it, tell me how it hurts and I can help you find a modification. When you're ready, inhale, arms up, and exhale, fold. It's okay to round your back. Think about reaching your nose toward whatever part of your leg you're reaching towards. It doesn't matter if you can touch your toes. It doesn't matter if you can reach around your toes. It doesn't matter if you can rest your elbows on the floor. Try and square your shoulders to the front of the room and relax your neck. When you're ready, slide your hands back, uncurl the spine, your feet. Bring the left leg up and over. We're gonna take the twist on this side now. Inhale up, exhale, elbow to knee or hand to knee, whatever level of twist you're at. Bring the belly, think about bringing the belly button up and towards the left as you twist to the right. Keep your foot planted flat on the floor and sit up straight. When you're ready, go ahead and untwist. Bend the right knee, bring the foot to the outside of the side part of your hip. Stack your left knee over your right knee or take it supine if that's better for you. Again, we're just gonna sit here and take the hip stretch. So straighten your back, you can fold if you want to, you can stay lifted. You can keep your hands behind you for support or not. If you want to lean forward and walk the hands out, that's okay. But don't take too much sensation. There's a difference between sensation and pain. We're looking for sensation, but not pain. It's okay to be tired, but you don't want any sharp pains at all. You should feel a pretty big sensation on the outside of the hip. All right, and then when you're ready, go ahead and uncurl the spine, untwist the legs, come forward onto your mat, and go ahead and roll your spine down. Um, honestly, I'm going to flip around so that you guys can still hear me. If this angle is weird for you guys, let me know for my demos, but I think it should be okay. So you're rolled onto your spine. Bring your feet back kind of so that your, your fingertips basically should be able to brush the backs of your feet. Think about stacking your knees over your ankles. When you're ready, go ahead and press your feet and your hands into the ground and lift the hips into a bridge pose. You can stay here if you want. Knees track over in the same direction, Ellie, in the same direction as your toes. If you want, you can lift two inches higher. You can lift the, elbow, the uh, chest and roll the shoulders under and clasp the arms. You can roll the chest back. I'm not gonna demo that because it'll hurt my this thing 
and then just hold here. Squeeze the butt. Think about tractioning the feet back towards your hands. And then when you're ready, release the shoulders, release the hands, and gently lower your butt back down. Widen the feet, let the knees fall in. You can place one hand on your belly and one hand on your chest to feel your breath. And then whenever you're ready, bring your knees again up above your hips. Tee your arms out to either side. You can also cactus them if you don't have the space. Or you can even let, uh, let them reach above you, but that's a little bit more challenging. Go ahead and drop your knees to the right side. What you want here is your, the, your left shoulder to be pressed into the ground. And let your body relax here. This shouldn't be hard. It's okay if your knees don't come all the way to the ground. If you've got like a blanket or a block or a pillow to go underneath of them that will make it more comfortable for you, that's fine. Shift your gaze to over your left arm and go ahead and let your gaze become heavy. Your eyes might close and just rest. Inhale, lift the knees back to center, and exhale, drop them to the other side. Make sure your right shoulder is pressing down and your gaze goes over your right fingertips. Go ahead and inhale your legs back to center one more time. Yeah, she's asleep. Are you talking to me? Lift your feet up to the sky and then bring your knees towards your shoulders. You can grab the outsides of your shins. You can grab your thighs if you want, or you can grab the insides the, or the outsides of your feet. If you want, you can grab your big toe too, but I like the outsides of my feet. It feels really good. Think about spreading the back, your lower back on the mat. So your back, your lower back is nice and flat. Feet press into the hands and hands press into the feet. This is a big hip stretch. If you want, you can straighten the leg into the foot one at a time, two at a time. It might not straighten all the way. That's okay. And then when you're ready, go ahead and bring me. I'm not asleep. Bring your knees into your chest. Wrap around as much as you can. If you can't reach your elbows, that's fine. Squeeze everything as tight as you can. And then on an exhale, let your legs reach out and flop to either side, and your arms lay flat, palms up. Go ahead and relax your face. Close your eyes for your final savasana. Eyes are closed. Release all of your muscles. Think about lead sinking down into the mat and letting it support you. Do a mental scan if you feel any tension. Send your breath to that part of your body and work to let it go. Release your eyebrows. Release the space in between your eyebrows. Release your lips. Your lips may part a little bit. Your jaw may hang open. 
Release the tongue from the top of the mouth and just lay. like this one. In the effort of this is a live stream, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys come out of Savasana now. Um, if you would like to stay here and rest, please do. It's good to take a long Savasana after a practice. It's good for your body and it, it really lets your mind recover. If you are ready to move forward, go ahead and start bringing some small movements back into your body. Um, you can wiggle your fingers, you can wiggle your toes, you might make s circles with your sh shins is what I was about to say, with your wrists or your ankles. If you'd like, you can reach your arms above your head and take a big good morning stretch. I can't because that aggravates my injury. And then when you're ready, you can roll onto either your left or your right side into kind of like a little fetal position here. From here, go ahead and push yourself up into a comfortable seated position. Uh, you can sit cross-legged. You can sit whatever's comfortable. You can sit on your heels. I like cross-legged. It feels good. Keep your eyes closed and take a moment to thank yourself for coming here and showing up and working through this probably way harder than you expected for it to be practice. Inhale, sweep your arms above your head. Hands touch above. Pull your hands to heart center. Bow your head to your chest and thank yourself. The light in me honors the light in you. May all beings know what it is to be loved and love through this practice. Namaste.